As early as 1995, Fortune magazine in the United States predicted that Hong Kong would become stagnant after its handover in 1997, even featuring the cover story, "The Death of Hong Kong." The author pointed out that Hong Kong would remain a place to make money, but as a colony of Beijing, it would inevitably slowly transform into an ordinary mainland city, rife with government and commercial corruption, collusion. And a disregard for the rule of law. In terms of business, foreign participants would no longer have a fair chance to compete, as Hong Kong would be under the control of a tight circle of government officials and political elite business interests. Most importantly, Hong Kong's officials would be under the scrutiny and manipulation of Chinese Communist Party, with governance more focused on nepotism and corruption. Rather than upholding the rule of law, unfortunately, the prediction was accurate. Let's take a look at the latest developments in the city. Affected by a slowdown in economic growth and weak market demand, Hong Kong's foreign trade continues to shrink. On July twenty fifth. The statistics released by the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region Government Census and Statistics Department showed that in June of this year, Hong Kong's overall exports and imports fell by 11.4 percent and 12.3 percent, respectively, with exports declining for 14 consecutive months, the longest downturn on record. The data shows that in June this year, Hong Kong's total merchandise export value. Was three hundred and thirty-seven point four billion Hong Kong dollars, down eleven point four percent year on year. June's merchandise export and import values were three hundred and thirty-seven point four billion and three hundred and ninety-three point nine billion Hong Kong dollars, respectively, with a trade deficit expanding to fifty-six point five billion Hong Kong dollars, the largest scale in a year. In the first half of this year, Hong Kong's total merchandise export value dropped fifteen point five percent. Compared to the same period last year, and merchandise import value fell 13.2 percent. The first half of the year recorded a tangible trade deficit of 231.6 billion Hong Kong dollars. Compared to June of last year, overall exports to Asia decreased by 12 percent. The top five countries with the largest decline in export value were Malaysia, down 31.9 percent; Singapore, down 26.2 percent. Japan down sixteen point eight percent, the Philippines down fifteen point eight percent, and mainland China down thirteen point one percent. Outside of Asia, the countries with the largest decline in total export value were Germany down twenty nine percent, the United States down twenty two point one percent, and the United Kingdom down fourteen point six percent. Compared with the same period last year, the top five destinations with the largest decline in total export value. In the first half of this year, were Japan down twenty four percent, Singapore down twenty three point five percent, Taiwan down nineteen point two percent, mainland China down nineteen point two percent, and India down seventeen point three percent. Meanwhile, the top six sources with the largest decline in import value during the same period were South Korea down thirty five point three percent, Singapore down thirty point nine percent, Thailand down twenty four point one percent. Vietnam down twenty point seven percent, Taiwan down seventeen point five percent, and mainland China down nine point six percent. A spokesperson for the Hong Kong government stated that under the weak external environment, the value of goods exports further decreased year on year in June this year. Exports to mainland China, the United States, and the European Union all declined. Exports to most other major Asian markets. Continue to record varying degrees of decline. Looking ahead, under the influence of slower global economic growth, Hong Kong's export performance will continue to be significantly suppressed in the short term. At present, major international companies have already moved their production bases away from mainland China, naturally weakening Hong Kong's role as a re-export port. In fact, the decline of Hong Kong did not start today. On July first, nineteen ninety-seven, Hong Kong formally returned to China under the shadow of communism, after experiencing the twenty nineteen anti-extradition law amendment bill movement. 
protests against the implementation of the Hong Kong national security law in 2020, and the impact of the three-year-long COVID-19 pandemic, Hong Kong's economy is deteriorating, and its status as an international financial centre is increasingly being challenged. In the 2022 rankings of the widely followed Global Financial Centres Index, GFCI, Singapore surpassed Hong Kong for the first time to become Asia's financial centre, ranking third globally, behind New York and London, with Hong Kong ranking fourth. According to the EY Global IPO Research Report, since 2019, the Hong Kong Stock Exchange status as a major international securities exchange has been declining. With its number of IPOs and IPO fundraising ranking first globally in 2019, but falling out of the top five by 2022, ranking 10th and 9th respectively. In response, Li Kongyue, a professor and doctoral supervisor at the School of Management, Sun Yat-sen University in Guangzhou, expressed his concerns. Hong Kong's status as a financial centre is not guaranteed. Firstly, in 2022, Hong Kong's population decreased by 133,000, with each person taking away an average of 5 million US dollars. Secondly, Hong Kong's exports dropped drastically in January and February of 2023, setting a new low since 1959. Thirdly, Hong Kong was originally the financial centre of Asia. It is extremely difficult for a region to become a financial centre it must first become an international shipping centre, then an international trade centre, and finally an international financial centre. Singapore was originally just an international trade centre because it was a transit point for international trade, a shipping transit point, not yet a financial centre. Now Singapore is replacing Hong Kong. Let's now look at the real estate sector. Compared to Singapore's property market, Official data from Hong Kong shows that the vacancy rate for Hong Kong's Grade A private offices has risen from less than 10% in 2019 to over 15% in 2022, reaching a near decade high. In contrast, Singapore's office buildings are in high demand. According to statistics from Real Estate Group, JLL, in August 2022, Rents for Grade A office buildings in Singapore CBD have risen for five consecutive quarters, with a vacancy rate of less than 7%. While the vacancy rate for Hong Kong office buildings continues to rise, rents are falling. The rent index for Hong Kong's Grade A private offices in Shanwan and Central was 278.1 in 2022, a new low since 2014. Wan Chai and Causeway Bay were 215.7 in 2022, a new low since 2013. And Tim Sa Zhou was 194.7 in 2022, also a new low since 2013. In addition, the rent index for all types of private residential properties in Hong Kong was 178.3 in 2022, a new low since 168.2 in 2016. In contrast, Statistics from the Singapore Urban Redevelopment Authority showed that rents for Singapore's private residential market soared by 11.2% in just the first half of 2022. Once part of the renowned Four Asian Tigers, both Hong Kong and Singapore are free ports and globally recognised international shipping centres. These two regions have built powerful maritime industry ecosystems through their thriving ports and trade encompassing sectors such as ship refueling, ship brokering, ship financing, maritime insurance, maritime law, and arbitration. Port cargo throughput is a crucial measure of a port's capacity. According to official statistics, in 2021, Singapore's port cargo throughput reached 599 million tonnes, a year-on-year increase of 1.4%. In contrast, Hong Kong's port cargo throughput has been declining for the past three years, falling to 214 million tonnes in 2021, a decrease of 14.1% from the previous year. From the perspective of container throughput, Singapore Port 
set a record high in 2021 with 37.5 million TEUs, 20-foot equivalent units, whereas Hong Kong's container throughput has fallen for four consecutive years, reaching 17.8 million TEUs in 2021. Since Hong Kong lost its title as the world's busiest container port in 2005, its international ranking has continually declined. According to the container port rankings by the French maritime consultancy Alpha Liner, Shanghai ranked first in 2021, followed by Singapore in second place, while Hong Kong fell to 10th. Statistics from the mainland media Taijing show that in 2021, Hong Kong housed 1,457 regional headquarters and 2,483 regional offices of multinational corporations, totaling 3,940. According to data from Roland Berger Consulting, in the same year, there were approximately 7,000 such branches of multinational companies in Singapore. In the top 300 companies in the 2021 Fortune Global 500 list, Excluding Asian firms, 100 established their regional headquarters in the Asia-Pacific region. Among them, 46 chose Singapore and 29 chose Hong Kong, implying that large multinational corporations are increasingly leaning towards setting up their regional headquarters in Singapore. Currently, the number of such companies in Singapore is 1.6 times that in Hong Kong. Historically, Hong Kong was seen as the prime base for conducting business operations in mainland China and neighbouring countries. However, due to the impact of factors such as the anti-extradition movement, COVID-19 control measures, the Hong Kong national security law, and Sino-US relations, some multinational corporations have successively moved their regional headquarters away from Hong Kong. For instance, the US apparel and footwear giant VF Corporation, the parent company of several famous apparel brands, had operated an office in Hong Kong for 25 years, employing approximately 900 local staff. From 2019 to 2021, the number of regional headquarters of multinational corporations in Hong Kong fell for three consecutive years, a trend showing no signs of abating. Compared to a decade ago, A prominent shift has been the significant decrease in US-based companies, dropping from 313 to 254, and a sharp rise in China-based companies, rising from 97 to 252. Once as part of the four Asian tigers, Hong Kong and Singapore had nearly identical GDP per capita. In 1997, Hong Kong's GDP per capita was $27,300, and Singapore's was $26,400. However, by 2022, while Hong Kong's GDP per capita reached $49,000, Singapore's soared to an impressive $82,800, almost double that of Hong Kong. Simultaneously, Hong Kong has experienced a significant outflow of various types of professional talent. A Bloomberg report from August 26, 2022, pointed out that the severity of this talent outflow is threatening Hong Kong's status as a financial centre. Particularly among Hong Kong residents under the age of 35, approximately 20% are considering moving abroad. This shift has reduced the workforce to a decade low, accelerating the ageing of Hong Kong society. According to data released by the Hong Kong government in August 2022, Approximately 121,500 people left Hong Kong in the year leading up to June 30, reducing the population to about 7.29 million, a 1.6% decrease. This marks the third consecutive year of decline, the most significant drop in 60 years. Furthermore, the exodus of Hong Kong's wealthy individuals, so-called high net worth individuals with over $1 million in investable assets, has drawn wide public attention. According to the Private Wealth Migration Report 2023, published by the world's largest investment immigration consultancy, Henley & Partners, Hong Kong saw a net outflow of more than 2,400 wealthy individuals last year. Its CEO, Jörg Steffen, noted that this increase in the emigration of the wealthy indicates a decline in confidence in the country or region, suggesting deteriorating conditions. The wealthy and their families vote with their feet by taking their wealth, companies, connections, and tax payments to other countries, negatively impacting the local economy. 
He believes that when the affluent decide where to move, they consider a politically stable country with low taxes and personal freedom to ensure their descendants' access to top-tier academic institutions, paving the way for their success. In other words, the exodus of tycoons serves as a clear indicator that among the wealthiest and most renowned magnates in Hong Kong, Li Ka-shing stands out. In fact, as early as 2015, Li began withdrawing his capital from the mainland and incrementally investing in places like the UK. Moreover, Li had long since acquired Canadian citizenship. Strictly speaking, as Hong Kong's most prominent investor, Li has always maintained a prudent vigilance regarding his investments in mainland China and the Chinese Communist government. Regrettably, in just over two decades, the prosperity of Hong Kong has faded. The city's decline has become an unavoidable reality. For many, Hong Kong is remembered not only as a financial and business hub, but also for its vibrant urban life, manifested in various facets like horse racing and nightlife. As a crossroads of ancient Chinese and Western cultures, since the 1960s, Hong Kong gave birth to martial arts novels represented by Jin Yong. Especially Hong Kong produced kung fu movies epitomized by Bruce Lee. These not only swept Hong Kong, Macau and Taiwan, but also mainland China and regions with Chinese populations worldwide, including Japan, Korea, Southeast Asia and Western countries. With the rapid spread of television in the 1970s, various beauty pageants, Hong Kong TV dramas and Cantonese pop songs became hot topics of conversation and bright landscapes in Hong Kong's pop culture. Due to the presence of the communist regime, particularly in the cultural sphere, China's modern era has long repressed cultural creation and exchange. For several decades after World War II, the West and Japan mainly learned about Chinese culture through Hong Kong a phenomenon that caused some dissatisfaction among traditional Chinese culture lovers elsewhere. However, due to its vulnerability to commercial and foreign cultural influences, Hong Kong's culture diverges from traditional Chinese culture. Predominantly Cantonese-speaking Hong Kong was seen as backward from the perspective of the Mandarin-dominated New Culture Movement and National Language Movement. The former Chinese Minister of Culture, Wang Meng, criticized Hong Kong as a cultural desert. Following the 1997 transition, especially after the implementation of the Hong Kong National Security Law, the survival space and freedom of speech of Hong Kong residents have been further squeezed and restricted. On July 3, 2023, on the third anniversary of the implementation of the National Security Law, the Hong Kong authorities issued warrants for the arrest of eight democratic activists living in exile overseas, accused of national security crimes. Following this, five former core members of Hong Kong's demo sisto were arrested, charged with supporting Hong Kongers in exile overseas through Me App, or known as Punish Me, an app developed to promote businesses that support Hong Kong's pro-democracy movement. The Chinese state-run media Xinhua News Agency confirmed on July 3rd that the Hong Kong Police National Security Division was pursuing several individuals, including former convener of the Progressive Lawyers Group, Benny Tai, businessman Brian Learn, executive director of the Hong Kong Democracy Council, Sunny Jen, former lawmakers Eddie Chu, Ted Ho, General Secretary of the Confederation of Trade Unions, Li Chek Yen, founder of multi-partisan advocacy organization Hong Kong Liberty, Nathan Law, and former lawmaker Ray Chan. A reward of 1 million Hong Kong dollars was offered for each person. This was the first time the Hong Kong government issued arrest warrants and rewards for Hong Kongers active overseas under the national security law, drawing widespread international attention and swift backlash from various governments. A report by Agents France Press pointed out that in the three years since the national security law came into effect, at least 260 people in Hong Kong have been arrested for so-called national security crimes, with over 160 individuals 
and five companies prosecuted by the authorities. Most of the defendants are well-known Democrats, activists, union members, or journalists. In a city filled with fear, people's imagination and desire to create gradually wither. The once thriving culture of Hong Kong is already a shadow of its former self before 1997, its influence fading by the day. One, a friendly city. The Great Escape to Hong Kong in the 1960s. In 1958, Mao Zedong launched the Great Leap Forward in mainland China, triggering a massive famine. Many Chinese people, in a bid for survival, fled to Hong Kong. On May 14, 1962, due to the overwhelming number of escapees, the Hong Kong government decided to abandon its settlement of refugees policy. Approximately 30,000 escapees were concentrated at Hua Shan in Suanshou, Hong Kong, awaiting repatriation. On May 15, Ming Pao, a newspaper owned by Jin Yong, published an editorial. The most precious thing is human life. The greatest act of kindness is to save human lives. The Ming Pao office became a relief supply center. Various religious groups, hometown organizations, and news media launched actions to help people in difficulty. Over tens of thousands of times, they delivered clothes, food, and water to Hua Shan. Hong Kong citizens also used various methods to protect their friends and family on Hua Shan, including forcibly taking them away, hiding them at home, or escaping into the city. The flooding in East China in 1991 between May and June of 1991, floods struck 18 provinces and autonomous regions in mainland China. The worst hit areas with the highest losses were Anhui and Jiangsu. In Anhui, over 48 million people were affected, and in Jiangsu, the number was over 42 million. The direct economic loss was 9 billion RMB, and 2 million homeless victims set up endless rows of temporary tents on the dike of the Huai River. At that time, almost all Hong Kong stars participated in the seven-hour-long Hong Kong Performing Arts Mobilization of Selfless Extravaganza at the Happy Valley Race Course. TVB, ATV, commercial films and Hong Kong radio were broadcast simultaneously, an unprecedented event, raising a total of 110 million Hong Kong dollars in donations. By July 23, 1991, in just 10 days, the total amount of disaster relief fundraising in Hong Kong had reached over 470 million Hong Kong dollars. According to the Hong Kong Economic Daily, the Hong Kong government donated 50 million Hong Kong dollars, and the Hong Kong people collectively donated over 600 million Hong Kong dollars. The 2008 Wenchuan earthquake in 2008, an 8.2 magnitude earthquake struck Wenchuan County, Xichuan Province, mainland China. According to official statistics, the earthquake resulted in 69,227 deaths, 17,923 missing, 374,643 injured to various degrees, and approximately 19.93 million people left homeless. However, Hong Kong, with a population of only 7 million, donated up to 23 billion Hong Kong dollars, accounting for more than half of all overseas donations, with an average of over 3,000 Hong Kong dollars per person. 95% of Hong Kong people made donations for the earthquake. 2. A Brave City the Operation Yellow Bird launched by all sectors in Hong Kong to rescue activists from the 1989 pro-democracy movement. On June 4, 1989, the shocking Tiananmen Square massacre occurred in Beijing, with the Chinese Communist Party deploying tanks and troops to slaughter unarmed students and citizen pro-democracy protesters, while also issuing a wanted order for the so-called student movement leaders. At that time, 
people from all walks of life in Hong Kong, including human rights advocates, Western diplomats, businessmen, smugglers, and even individuals from the entertainment industry and gangs participated. The entire Operation Yellow Bird rescued about 800 people, and 15 of the 23 student leaders on the wanted list were successfully rescued and relied on this operation to escape overseas. Annual June 4th Memorial Event in Victoria Park, Hong Kong After June 4th, 1989, Hong Kong residents held a June 4th Memorial Event every year in Victoria Park until 2020, when the Hong Kong government forcibly cancelled the event citing pandemic concerns. At the 2019 memorial marking the 30th anniversary of June 4th, the organisers estimated that over 180,000 people participated. This year, on June 4th, the Hong Kong police arrested four people near Victoria Park, including well-known activist Alexandra Wong, otherwise known as Grandma Wong, and a man holding a script for a play titled May 35th, which describes the Tiananmen mothers. According to Hong Kong media reports, the police deployed a force of 6,000 officers that day. Hong Kong's Anti-Extradition Law Amendment Bill Movement In 2019, due to a murder case in Taiwan, the Hong Kong government proposed to amend the Fugitive Offenders Ordinance. However, there was widespread concern that this would allow the government to extradite people in Hong Kong to mainland China, notorious for its lack of rule of law and human rights. On June 16, 2019, Nearly 2 million Hong Kong citizens, heeding the call of the Civil Human Rights Front, wore black and took to the streets to protest against the amendment of the Fugitive Offenders Ordinance. The Perseverance of the Hong Kong People When Beijing took over the sovereignty of Hong Kong in 1997, it promised to respect the freedoms and rights of the Hong Kong people, a guarantee not only written into Hong Kong's basic law, but also protected by the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights. However, Beijing's promises proved empty. As Hong Kong people's struggle for their rights intensified, Beijing imposed the harsh national security law on Hong Kong, imprisoning a large number of democratic leaders, turning the Legislative Council into a rubber stamp institution, and crushing Hong Kong's press freedom and civil society. Conclusion In June 1995, Fortune magazine's cover story was titled The Death of Hong Kong. In it, author Louis Kra wrote, It's time to stop pretending. Supposedly, Britain's handover in less than 750 days of Hong Kong, the world's most aggressively pro-business economy to China, the world's largest still officially communist dictatorship, is going to be a non-event. Like the loyal retainers in the tale of the emperor who wore no clothes, Chinese and Western dignitaries continue to insist, despite growing evidence to the contrary, that as Lord Young, chairman of British telecommunications giant Cable and Wireless, declared recently, the best years for Hong Kong lie ahead. In fact, the naked truth about Hong Kong's future can be summed up in two words, it's over. Hong Kong has two famous landmarks. One is Lion Rock, representing the courage, resilience and resistance of the Hong Kong people. 
The other is the Buddha statue on Lantau Island, representing the divine protection of the city and the deep-seated hopes of the people. Hong Kong's decline is an undeniable fact, but in the eyes of many, Hong Kong is still a remarkable city. They believe that one day, Hong Kong will rise from the ashes after breaking free from the nightmare of communism. <laughs>